Okay, hello everyone. Today we are looking at unpacking uh, source-based questions skills. Uh, basically, we are looking at inference as well as similarities. And the objective is to recap what is source-based skills. We look at inference and we will look at compare and contrast. Okay, so what are sources? These are just some examples of sources. Sources can be textual, it can be uh, pictures of coins or pottery or anything uh, to do or related with archaeology. All right, so when we look at sources, the whole idea is to actually unpack the sources. Okay, so let's start. Uh, what is inference? So when you look at inference, um, you ask yourself, how do you actually do inference? Okay, so inference is specifically from what you can read. Okay, the information, the codes, the pictures, um, the source details itself, the provenance, right? And what you know about, uh, for example, the topic itself. So a topic like law and order, what have you understood? What have you remembered? Okay, so you can use your background knowledge as well as things that you know about the topic. So when we talk about what you can infer, it is really about putting them together to make your own sensible conclusion. So an inference is not just to copy, an inference is actually to make an informed guess and you have to make reference to the source details and you have to understand the entire context of the source. Now, what is the difference between an inference as well as an observation? Now, observation is just something very factual uh, based on your experience um, and you just take a look at it. Whereas an inference is what you think or decide about something after you observe. So it's really what I meant just now. It is really an informed guess. Okay, there's many ways of looking at inference or um, different guides at looking at inference. Now I'd like you to see your worksheet 4 and uh, refer to it. Now, one of the examples of doing inference is to use uh, the see, the think, as well as the infer guide to sort of help you unpack sources. So when we say we use the see, okay, seeing means what you have looked or what you have observed from the source, you look at the source details specifically. So when you read this particular source, especially because it is on the Great Depression, all right, um, you can see that this is paragraph one and this is paragraph two of the source. So what is it from the source that you can discover about Great Depression? So one of the things that you see would be um, from paragraph one, um, estate workers, uh, clerks, laborers, for example, uh, they actually are affected uh, more than those in the local economy uh, and they experience a low cost of living. So this specifically talks about here, right? These are people uh, during the Great Depression because they are employed by companies that is out of Singapore or, you know, businesses that's out of Singapore, they suffer more because the idea of Great Depression is it affects something that affects somewhere out of Singapore will also affect Singapore because everyone is interconnected, right? So this is what you see. For example, this is something that you have observed. Next is what do you think? Okay, so when Great Depression, for example, hits companies, um, people who were employed in these companies lost their jobs and they went through hardship. Okay, so remember this, this part? 
Okay, employers, they suffered more than those. So what does suffered more means? Think, think about it. All right. If you are a worker and you are unable to provide the basic necessities for your family, how does it affect the individual? So next would be after you have C, after you have thought about it, now what can you infer? Okay, so because we are just focusing on first paragraph, it is very evident or it's very clear that if a person were to work in an international company or you are working with a company that is outside Singapore, then definitely you would be more affected. Companies that are uh, specifically or people who are working internally or just in Singapore, they are hawkers, farmers or tutors, they could get by. So this is an inference. Some people were less affected during Great Depression because their jobs were not closely connected to the international market. So this is the part that you infer. So you can see you start with looking at what you see from the source, you make an observation and you make sort of an informed um, choice uh, or an inference on what you have seen, what you have taught, and then you make that inference. Okay, so for the next step, we are going to look at uh, worksheet 5a and we are going to go back to inference. Okay, so when you get a particular question, you will also get this thing called background information. So what is background information? Background information is basically things that uh, tells a little bit about the source. Okay, so when we talk about law and order, it is really about uh, law and order, right? And this entire source-based question is talking about how effective was the British in maintaining this law and order. Okay, so you read the source um, and you also read the background information. However, I want you to remember that background information is not to be used in a source. It is used as reference. Okay, so it is just to help you to understand the sources better. Okay, so let's everyone take a look at source A. Now source A, look at the photograph, look at the provenance. It is a photograph of a police station and located in Tanjung Katong area. And let's start with our thinking routine first. So for example, what can you see in this particular photograph? Okay, so maybe you want to question, what was the manpower like given that there's only four people here? Where was the police station, for example? Uh, why is the police station looking um, like in a hut, right? Is it because it's located away from the town? Uh, is it because it's in this particular Tanjung Katong area? All right, so these are the things that you can literally see from the source. Next is what can you think about the source? Okay, uh, do you think that the police unit will be effective given that you understand there's a lot more migrants coming in into Singapore? And why do you think that having four is enough? Uh, four manpower for policemen is enough? Or do you think that it's not enough? And from there, you do your inference. Okay, so what can you infer about the police unit? So after you have done that thought process of see, think, infer, what you can do is you're going to write it down. So let's take a look at how we write it down. Okay, so first we always answer the question. We say that I can infer from source A that the police unit was very small. Second is give evidence from the source. It shows four policemen standing outside a simple looking hut which was supposed to be a police station. And then you make the explanation that what is it that you know? So since the police force was very small and from the evidence you can only see four policemen, what does it suggest? It suggests that it was actually quite hard to maintain peace or to deal with the various problems because why? Can four policemen uh, solve all the problems of immigrants such as uh, the law and order, such as secret societies? So this is something that you make an inference about. 
Okay, so for the next source, let's take a look at source B. Now, when you unpack source B specifically, it is about um, the dangers of secret societies. So the question was, what does the source tell you about the secret societies in Singapore? So same thing. Sometimes the inference question can be, a what does the source tell you or what can you infer? And based on the source, you can see that the secret society well, isn't so positive. They are ransacking, murdering. Uh, they are doing something. Um, but at almost uh, all parts of the town every night in the early 1840s. Okay, so it shows that actually um, our police force, remember in source A, the one that's only four people, uh, they were unable to stop uh, this particular problem. So again, what can you see? What was the secret societies doing? All right, now from there, what can you think? Right? What do you think the source wants you to think about secret societies? Are they good? Okay, because we know from our background formation or we know from our uh, textbook that sometimes some of these secret societies offer, um, offer relationship, they look after new migrants, but based on the source, what do you think the source wants you to think about secret societies and why do you say so? So what can you infer about secret societies from this as you are reading and answering the question? So again, after you have done your thinking routine, which is your see, think and infer, how do we write it down? Okay, so first thing is you infer. It tells me that the secret society caused a lot of trouble to the people. Okay, second is you give me evidence from the source. So instead of describing, just like what you saw in the picture in source A, here you actually quote from the source because these are all evidences. And what do you explain? Now you know that they are troublemakers, right? And you've got evidence, right? So what does it suggest? It suggests that they're quite violent and they have caused a lot more of disorder as well as fear. Now in the next session, we will look at comparison. So what is comparison? It is actually looking at skills. It's actually to detect similarities or differences as well as looking at the two sources. Is there something in common? And we're only going to focus specifically on things that are similar. So for example, the, the apple and the orange here, how are they similar? Oh, they're similar because they are fruits. Now again, I am referring to worksheet 5a and I want all of you to look at this part, okay, question C. Now in question C, there is a checklist. There's a checklist on how you are uh, guided to actually write. So the one in grey, for example, is how you would write. Now always remember in compare contrast, you must have an appropriate connector. So as you are describing source A and telling me what is source A, and explaining to me what is source A. Similarly, and or likewise, source B also tells you the same sort of things that you are comparing with. Okay, so when we are doing compare contrast, I want you to make sure that you have a few color pen, okay, or highlighter. It is good for us to make the connection and the inference. Now, let's take a look at source C. Source C talks about the life of immigrants, um, and it does talk about the problems that they are facing. Okay, source D also talks about definitely immigrants and the problems that they are facing. Now, remember the whole entire topic was about law and order. So, uh, let's annotate the source. Okay, so you can see here, I have annotated the source. Now, in yellow and yellow literally means that it is matching. Okay, they are similar because there's not enough resources. How do you know? The fact that uh, little money was available to expand the tiny police force, which struggled to keep order. Okay, the law enforcement team ran on a shoestring budget. So both of them are similar because there's not enough resources to maintain law. Now in blue, for example, it is also similar because 
migrants or immigrants continuously arrived. And in source D, it was a convenient location along the trading route. Freeport brought not only and uh, traders and merchants, but also permanent settlers. So that means it does give you the sensing that, oh, it shows that Singapore was actually quite popular last time. And there was a large migration and large immigrants who came and settled down in Singapore. The one that I circled rather lawless, as well as no legal code. So read, what does no legal code means? That means there was no set of laws and of order in a country. So they're also similar, right? The two sources, the two sources are similar because it tells you that actually in um, Singapore, uh, the early years of Singapore was very lawless and it was filled with chaos because not enough resources, too many immigrants. So you can see from this source, I can give one in one similarity, two similarity, and three similarities here. So a first similarity would be, can you see, they are similar in saying that many people migrated to Singapore, the common criteria. Source C says this, and the connecting uh, word, source D says this. So what does it tell you? Thus both suggest that many people at that time were attracted to come to Singapore. That's your explanation. So try to get, if you see a six marks compare contrast or similarity question that they are looking or the question requires you to have two, at least two similarities. Now both sources are similar because they said that the police force had little resources or money. Remember the shoestring budget from source D as well as not enough funds to expand from source C. Again the connectors N is needed here. Okay, hence or thus both suggest that the police force had not much support to do their work in maintaining law and order. Now, another um, similarity that you could see from sources C and D is uh, both sources are similar. They agree that Singapore had a high crime rate. That's your common criteria. Source C talks about the lawless atmosphere and source D talks about maintaining of law and order was the most serious problem. So it suggests that the government was unable to maintain order as people were not obeying the law. So this could be another set of similarity. Okay, so I'm going to refer you to Worksheet 7. Now, if you look at Worksheet 7, I'm just going to focus on Compare Contrast. Okay, and look at this. Again, what were the reasons for unrest in 19th century Singapore? And I want you to always remember that background information is always used as a trigger um, to help you or it is a clue uh, to help you answer all the sources. Okay, so let's look at source C and source D from worksheet 7. Okay, so it does tell you a little bit about the police, insufficient, um, and it talks about the strength of the police that maybe, oh, it's not enough. Okay, um, it talks also about bribery, right? And in source D, it also tells you uh, about small police force. Can you see here? Insufficient, small. And it talks a bit about accepting small rewards. Ah, where does small rewards come from? Can you see bribery small rewards? Ah, so as you are thinking, as you're comparing, you can see the similarity. Okay, so if you can see source C as well as source D, I want you to focus on the yellow color because that's our first inference. Remember, just now I talked about insufficient police and the police force was very was still very small. So how do we write it? Both sources are similar in showing there's insufficient police force, right? There isn't enough manpower. From source C, it says insufficient, da, 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 da. you quote again the source, bring it here. And remember the connecting uh, word? Source D, the police force was still small. You can write that there was not enough police force or it was... Um, uh, they were facing problems within the police force, it's possible. Now, always remember, as you do your similarity in criteria, you have your evidence from both source C and source D. You also have your explanation. So this suggests that there was not enough police force for a growing number of, uh, or a growing Singapore, and it could uh, create problems. And lastly, focus on the one in green. Okay, so the one in green, can you see? Bribery remains a problem. Why? 
because in Sonsi it also says they had no choice but to accept small rewards. So you can see um, they are similar in showing that the police force accepted money to supplement their income. That is your second common criteria. Source C and Source D quote the, so quote the source details from both Source C and D. And this suggests that the police force was corrupted and they took money from secret societies. So you can see that compare contrast is not so difficult. Uh, make sure that you revise uh, and you're able to actually answer any compare contrast questions.